In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and unto the ages of all ages, Amen. Welcome to another episode of One Accord. And in this series, we're trying to examine the early church, the apostolic church, the one that's presented to us in the book of Acts, chapters 1 and 2, and seeing the lessons that we can learn from the early church and implement in our today's church and parishes and our day-to-day -day living that we may return once more to the glories of the apostolic era and to see the amazing miracles of God and the transformation of lives that occurred in the early church. This episode will be examining the verse mentioned in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to speak about being filled with the Holy Spirit. It seems that being filled with the Holy Spirit was one of the most important themes in the scriptures and especially in the Gospel of Luke as well as in the book of Acts, which of course have the same author. Being in fellowship with the Holy Spirit meant that the church was alive. It wasn't just like dead, but, but it, it, it has like these beautiful greenery here that we see around us are due to the fact that they've been watered. But if they were withering away and falling off and uh, seem kind of dry and dead, then there, was, there is no life, there's no juice going through them. So being filled with the Holy Spirit was so essential for the early church that made it so much effective in the world that it lived in. As a matter of fact, we find that not only were the disciples filled with the Holy Spirit, but it seems that everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit, even our Lord Jesus Christ as He started His mission in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 verse 1. It says that He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Zacharias also as he spoke and prophesied, it seems that He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1 and verse 67. St. Peter in the book of Acts verse uh, 4 uh, chapter 4 and verse 8 also was filled with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was so amazing to the fact that he was also filled with the Holy Spirit while he was still in his mother's womb. Luke chapter 1 and verse 15. It seems also that St. Stephen, one of the main criteria uh, with which he was chosen for this new ministry of the diaconate was the fact that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and we read about this in Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. Another beautiful disciple, an apostle and a teacher who had such a prominent place in the early church, Barnabas, was also filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 11 and verse 24. And then finally it says that all the disciples, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit again in Acts chapter 13 and verse 52. Why was it so important that all the disciples, even our Lord Jesus Christ, spoke through the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of, of God Almighty. And we know that when we have the Spirit of God in us, not just a little measure, but the fullness of the Spirit, we have the fullness of the indwelling of God in our hearts, a spirited church, a church that has so much passion. Unfortunately for the Jewish nation, they had fallen into despair and they were lukewarm. They said, they said that we are the children of Abraham, we have the promises, so we don't need to put in any effort. It's as if everything is secure for us. But we saw the passion of John the Baptist in preaching and in warning people and in returning them back to the faith in God Almighty and telling them, unless you repent, you shall all perish. And we spoke to them about the tree that has no fruits and that they should return and have fruits that are worthy of their repentance. Our Lord Jesus, in being filled with the Holy Spirit, He spoke also and taught the people another kind of teaching, the teaching of kindness and the teaching of compassion and of tolerance and of being non-judgmental. This is what it meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not to, be, not to have always a judgmental eye. When people came to him about uh, some inheritance, he said, 
Who am I to be your judge? Even though he is the ultimate judge, our Lord Jesus is so kind and is so sweet that when the woman who was caught in adultery came to him and the law says that she should be stoned, he reminded the Pharisees and those who wanted to stone her that he who of you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And he spared her an awful kind of death. And she repented and became a great saint. The Samaritan woman likewise who had five husbands and the one she was living with was not her husband. She turned around, kindness turns around people and make them from sinners into saints. This is the beauty of repentance. As the spiritual elder said, blessed are you, O repentance, because you have made saints out of adulterers and you have made righteous people out of sinners. We believe in the work of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. My beloved, the church needs now people who are not lukewarm, who just are observers, but we need to take ownership of the church. We need to take ownership of the ministry, each and every one. This ministry is only, not only reserved for a select few, but it's for each and every person who loves the Lord and feel, feels called to witness unto His holy name. We have attained and received the Holy Spirit through the sacrament of chrismation and anointing of the Spirit. But the Spirit wants to fill us every single day. It speaks in, in Ephesians that we should not be filled with wine, but on the contrary, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, there is a story in the book of Ezekiel that speaks about a vision of dry bones. And these dry bones represented the Jewish nation who had withered away and have no more passion and no more love and no more zeal in their hearts. Ezekiel chapter 37 speaks about a renewal and a new revival. I see a new revival coming. Amazing young men and women who are ch taking charge of the church, who are rising up and taking ownership of the church and saying, this is my church. I want to serve God. I want to witness to Him. I want to show my beautiful church of the saints, the church of the martyrs, the church of the sacraments, the church that has struggled for so many centuries to deliver to us the pure faith, a new generation that is rising out of the ashes and not being in tune with all the heresies or all the wrongful teachings that they may hear. A very intelligent generation that is very well versed and very well educated. God is working through this amazing generation of young men and women, young adults and youth and children to proclaim how amazing it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Lord said to Ezekiel, prophesy, look at these dead bones and prophesy that they would be covered once more and he said that he will send his Holy Spirit to revive the nation in verse 13 then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves O my people and brought you up from your graves I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land then you shall know that I the Lord has spoken it and performed it. The Lord is going to renew us. He is going to take away that heart made of stone and place it with a heart made of flesh. He's going to cover our bones with skin and with nerves and with veins so that it will be a living church. My dear friends, what I'm saying here is that if we as a church only look at the traditions and perform them like machines without any kind of feeling, without any kind of indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we become the, like robots. God doesn't want robots. If He wanted robots, He could have invented robots who kind of do certain motions. But there is a reason that He created us in His own image and likeness and breathed, breathed His Holy Spirit into each and every one of us. And He has filled us with His Holy Spirit. And if I feel my measure of the Spirit is declining, I run to Him, I run to the sacramental church, and I partake of the Holy Communion, or maybe confess my sin and receive the absolution from my confession father, and then my vessel could be filled again. I will bow down in prayer and say, Lord Jesus, send me your Holy Spirit to fill my heart. I want my church to be an amazing church where people come in and feel 
the indwelling of the Holy Spirit through the righteousness of God that dwells in it, through the holiness of the people who dwell in it, men and women of prayer and of worship and of praise who take ownership today of the church. That's our prayer for the next generation. May we be always filled with the Holy Spirit that He may direct our church in this generation and every generation to come. And glory be to God forever. Amen.